today I'm very privileged to be interviewing someone who is um, my mentor. Uh, he's a, a very close brother and friend. Um, and um, he is usually my co-host in these recordings. And uh, today is on this side, on the other side of the, of the show. And um, I'm very, very excited uh, about the, the conversation that we're going to have today. And um, that is uh, Johan Stein. Uh, he's he's my, uh, my, uh, my guest today. And um, the reason why we're going to have this uh, discussion today is that um, Johan has put together this very exciting book where he compiled the articles that he wrote last year. Um, about uh, artificial intelligence, and he, he writes about uh, the, the social impact of, of this technology, the, the, the applications from a business uh, point of view. Uh, he talks about uh, privacy, ethics, uh, and the future of this technology. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. Um, he, he, Johan doesn't need uh, any, any introduction. But well, for, for the sake of those that are watching these uh, recordings uh, for the first time, I'll just give a brief uh, introduction uh, about Johan. Um, now, Johan is, is, is an uh, artificial intelligence uh, enthusiast, maybe I should say an expert uh, in, in the space. And uh, he speaks globally um, at uh, conferences on the fourth industrial revolution and emerging technologies. And uh, he is the 2019 award winner of Best AI and Robotics Management Consultant by Wealth and Finance Magazine uh, from the UK. And he is a published author who contributes on a regular basis uh, on uh, thought leadership um, you know, to well-known publications such as Business Day, Times, or Sunday Times, Finwick, uh, IT Web Brainstorm, you name them. And uh, he is the chair of the Special Interest Group on Artificial Intelligence and Robotics with the Institute of IT Professionals South Africa. So we were we very, very excited, Johan. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, today I'm, I'm putting you on the spot and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to our conversation. Maybe just to, to kickstart, you have put this uh, book together, um, you know, about artificial intelligence. Uh, maybe what, what prompted you to put uh, together such a book? And, um, and maybe if you can tell us more about it and, 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 and what you expect the reader to get out of it. Thank you so much for that warm introduction and welcome. I definitely also see you as a friend and a brother. I mean, we've walked this journey together doing these recordings, met some fascinating people. And just every, every week when we do this, I realize what amazing people we have in South Africa doing good work. It's not all doom and gloom. I mean, the, all that we see in the news is doom and gloom. Yep. We've got people utilizing technology, doing good things for the future of our children in healthcare and education and society and so forth. So it's a wonderful privilege. Thank you so much. Also, you know, uh, ML Africa was, uh, and you, Zenzele, were one of the first people ever to invite me to speak at a conference. Um, you know, last year I did, which is all virtual, I did 31 conferences. So by now I'm a bit more sorted with it, even though after every, before every talk, I'm nervous like hell. After every <laughs> talk, I think I did a horrible job. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I'll always be loyal to you. You gave me a chance to start speaking about this stuff, you know, so thank you. So, so and yes, I, I've always been wanting to write. And I've written a bit over the years about all kinds of things, spirituality and philosophy, which philosophy in particular, which is a great passion of mine. I started being exposed to AI when I was working at one of the large local banks. And, and, and I just thought I've never heard of this stuff, even though we now know it's been around for 40 or 60 years. And there's been these so-called AI winters where the technology and the hype did not deliver on what it promised, but with you know cloud technology and with processing power, and I don't think we'll have a, a AI winter again. I mean, this stuff is in all on all our mobile phones in our homes and a lot of our, our lives. But I started speaking to people, and I realized a lot of people also don't know about it. So I just so literally everything I know about AI, which I think is still very limited, is self-taught. I read every book I could read. I spoke to everyone I could speak. I started on LinkedIn reaching out to big names in the AI world, and I was surprised that 
how many people came back to me and said, happy to collaborate, happy to share you information, happy to chat, which was surprising. And that's why even today, for me, whenever somebody reaches out, especially somebody doing a degree, studying, wanting to know more, I will, if I time permits, I will permit them. I'd love to keep on sharing. Half the time, I don't even give them anything. I just say, you have to speak to this person, this person, and that person, you know. But in any case, so, and then I, um, but around about, I think, April of last year, I got the opportunity to do a business day interview with Michael Avery, um, together with Prof. Salit Simawala from the University of Johannesburg. And um, it was a wonderful recording. And then I thought, let me reach out to Michael, which I did. And we had coffee in Melrose, Arch. And I said, listen, there's so much happening in our market. That's not all Silicon Valley. That's not all America and whatever, or, the, or Europe. Let's host a, a recording once every month, inviting people in South Africa doing great work. And he said, okay, let's do it. And we've now done nine or 10 uh, monthly recordings. And it's been amazing. And Michael keeps on telling me he never realized there's so many good things happening with this tech. But, but to answer your question, I know it's a long-winded answer, but I, I, I pinged him and I said, Michael, I'd love to write for Business Day. You are involved with Business Day TV and, and the holding company. And, you know, Michael's also doing Classic FM and Hot 102.7 or whatever. And I said, just introduce me to the editor of Business Day, please. And, and maybe just to backtrack, um, Denzele, over the years, I have been yeah. reading the Business Day newspaper almost weekly. I would, there was, there's always a little cafe or a shop near to either my home or where I work, where I would stop, okay. I'd buy the Business Day. I love the smell of the newspaper. That's why I don't always read these things online or on the iPad. I do that feeling of yeah. opening the paper um, with a cup of coffee. And, and I, I never thought I'd read, I'd write for them. And then the, the editor came back and said, yes, submit one or two pieces, which I did. And I liked it. And um, on the page 14, normally, which is called the, the bottom line, they've given me a section. It's fairly small. It's 560, 600 words. Yeah. But in July last year, I started submitting, and I think by now it must be like 36 or so pieces I've published. And in fact, I'm waiting tonight, my, my, because then only on the Tuesday night, they publish it online, and then on the Wednesday, it's in the paper. And I still have the newspaper of my first little piece. In It's already yellow there in my little shelf. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I've been wabbling on now, and I hope it's answered your question, but it was a great privilege. And, and the big thing also is to remember that Business Day is, is obviously aimed at a business leadership kind of audience. Yeah. It's not technical. It's not an IT publication. It's to help normal people, if you would, make sense of this technology. And I'd like to think that I have an ability to translate all this technical stuff into a language that a lot of people can appreciate. So just to wrap up the answer of your question. So and yeah. then obviously opportunities came up for Fin Week and IT Web and Brainstorm and others. And then in December, I decided, let's put all of these together in a book that's freely available, because obviously the copyright is not mine, it's that of the publications. And I've put it all together in a book, and I've asked some people to, and I've asked Dr. Jacques Ludic, whom you and I have had on our show, yeah. to do the foreword, which he wrote a beautiful piece for me. And I've asked some others, which we can touch on for a bit of a recommendation. And so far, it's been good. I mean, um, there's no money to be made. I want to spread the word saying we have to think about this technology. Hmm. Let me hmm. stop because I've been going on forever now and see what else you might, might want to ask me. Great, Johan. It's, it's very interesting journey there. Um, I can see that you're very passionate about uh, this technology. Uh, you know, the, the way you, you are talking about it there, um, I'm very actually inspired. Uh, you know, but uh, I wanted to ask you because you 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 write for a, a publication that uh, focuses on business. You write for a publication that focuses on finance, and you write for a publication that focuses on technology. And um, you know, you you sound to be like an all rounder. But if you can tell me what what topics are you passionate about? I mean, to write about. You know, because I think there the, the, the are those topics that really drives you and you gets you, you know, moving and uh, gets you excited to, to write about. Maybe you can tell me more about that. 
it's a good and a daunting question, Zanzele. Yeah. Look, luckily the editors of this publication does, or the, the assistant editors will provide a lot of guidance. Um, I remember the one day, and, and I've seen this in the movies where, you know, the, the paper is ready to run. If you think of business day, I mean, they start yeah. printing at about 11 o'clock at night so that it can be distributed to, and I think they've got about 27 or 30,000 papers they produce. So you can okay. go to all the garages and the CNAs and the shops. And, and one night I had a call from the, the editor um, and he said, listen, my piece is too long. We need to cut two paragraphs. So this is like 10 o'clock at night. Okay. And, uh, and he said, we've got five minutes before the print run starts. And it felt so exciting. It felt like in the movies. And we looked at it quickly yeah. and I said, I think we can drop this and that paragraph. He said, good. And off they went printing, you know, okay. but um, the, the editors do provide me a lot of guidance around shaping it for whether the, it is, like you said, the technology audience, the mm -hmm. finance audience, or the, the more the business audience. In time, I also felt like I got a bit better at understanding the flavor of writing that, you know, so... Uh, with with business day for instance i rarely get the editor coming back to me and say you need to change a few things we need to drop a few things that might still happen but it's almost like they i've gotten into the groove now i've gotten into what they believe will be good for their, their audience but but to answer your question i think look, every week i feel a bit of a scary moment about what i'm going to write about next um, i've got a, a sheet a spreadsheet where whenever i Hear something, you know, and it often happens with the the conversations you and I are having with some of our guests on the ML Africa YouTube channel. Um, and then I also I read a lot. And a long time ago, somebody told me if you want to be a writer, you have to read a lot more than you're writing. So I read a heck of a lot, blogs, um, newsletters, books, and and every time I think of something interesting, I write it down on a list. And, and in time, it's almost like it needs to ferment in my mind because I, I'm not ready to write about that, but that's interesting. And a week or two later, I don't know, a few things have clicked because writing is a story for me. You know, it, you have to take the audience um, on this journey. And even, you know, in a 600 piece uh, article, you don't have a lot of time to make your argument. Mm -hmm. I try often to start off with a bit of an historical, interesting thing that will make people think, oh, this is just not AI and technology and it's boring, you know, and then bring it all and then bring the whole story back to the conclusion, connecting with the, the introduction. But yeah, so that is, I've got a lot more things I want to write, but every week it is daunting. Whenever I send one of my articles, I think, oh my goodness, I've, I feel wasted. I feel empty. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. somewhere in the week, a few things click and I write again and yeah, so... So that is the process for me. I don't know how other people uh, work since earlier. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay. That's, that's quite awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, you, you mentioned um, uh, Jacques Ludic. Uh, you know, he recently wrote a book about uh, democratizing artificial intelligence to benefit everyone. Um, and uh, he, he wrote the, the foreword for you. And I think um, a lot of other people within the, the AI field also made some recommendations, um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe if you can uh, tell us more about, about that, uh, the, about those recommendations, you know, so that maybe some of us and others who are listening uh, might be inspired to say, well, if, uh, if uh, so-and-so is uh, recommending this book and I can actually also want to get hold of it. Thank you, Zinzele. Look, over the years, I've tried to reach out to a lot of people. And like I said earlier, I was surprised at how many of them were open to connecting back, LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever, chatting, sharing ideas. And, yeah. and Dr. Jacques, Jacques Ludic in particular, who is one of the father figures of this kind of technology, especially in the African or South African context, you and I've had him on, on our recording also before. He, I look up at him and, you know, he wrote this book about a year ago called Democratizing Artificial Intelligence to benefit everyone, benefit everyone, shaping a better future in the smart technology era. What, what I love about him is that he, even though he's a, a, a PhD in this technology, he had one of the first AI companies that was sold to an American or a foreign company 
10 or 20 years ago i don't know but he's really a trailblazer in our market and but but everything that drives him is the future of our children the future of society this this great cause that he's working for so i reached out to him and said jock listen you because he would often comment or reshare some of my posts regarding the articles he's really supportive you know I do the same because his stuff is amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it it shadows the stuff I'm writing. But I said, listen, Jacques, here, uh, here's the ebook, the draft. Would you love to write a piece? And he came back to me the same day with his foreword. Okay. And if I can just read quickly, because he said, um, it is clear sure. from your book um, that not only was 2021 a prolific year for him in terms of writing and speaking, but the AI-related topics under discussion are of great relevance with respect to AI societal impact on South Africa, Africa, mm. and the world at large. Um, and yeah, and then he goes on a bit, but he, he wrote a beautiful foreword, and you know I've got a great deal of respect for him. And then Zele, and then I also reached out to others that I have been connect, connected with over the years. And one of the first who came back to me is Dr. Dmitry Kanevsky, who works for Google. Um, he's a research scientist. He is the creator of Google's Live Transcribe. Now, Dimitri, whom I, on my own YouTube channel about two years ago, did an interview with, he was born deaf. And he created, and I mean, he worked at the Max Planck Institute. He worked for IBM. He's really an incredible person, smart. But he, 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 just, he um, developed this application on a smartphone that people who are deaf or hard of hearing can actually look at their phone while you're speaking and it's just transcribing it on the fly. And also while, so when he was speaking with me, because he speaks in a way that I can't understand what he's saying, but on the screen, it's it's on the fly transcribing what he's saying 100% accurately. So so he, he just wrote a little sentence. He said, Johan's book is out of the box thinking on AI, could be interesting to all. And to get that from somebody at Google and somebody like him, is incredible. There's a few more. I'm going to just mention two more. Um, Sean Cully in the UK, who wrote Transition Point from Steam to the Singularity, which is a big book to read, but it is incredible. It takes you on this journey of technological innovation from kind of the Middle Ages through the first Industrial Revolution through to where we are today. <coughs> Excuse me. And based on all of that, looking into the future, he wrote this and I felt so humbled. He said, Johan has also become Africa's leading AI commentator, offering a unique perspective on a subject that is usually dominated by American and European voices. And I thought, wow, what a great word from such a fantastic author. And then just lastly, to answer your question, Dr. Rahul Rodriguez, who is the dean, or I think these days the, the Pro Vice, Vice Chancellor at Watson University in India. Now, Watson was one of the first universities who offered an MBA that was focused and infused with artificial intelligence. These days, I think there are a lot more organizations, educational organizations doing it. But Watson well, is, is really a trailblazer. I've also spoken to a lot of the student intakes where I've done a talk and they've given me great opportunities. But Rahul wrote here, he said, Johan's articles are game changing and I've set a new benchmark for academic reference in line with business schools accreditation requirements and referring to industry orientated articles. Johannes initiated a mobilization of industry academia linkage, which is important and I'll comment on that now, that is here to stay. I look forward to more articles. So there's this divide between academia who's doing incredibly important work, people working in the trenches and in industry. We have to do a lot more to speak with each other. But yeah, so, yeah. and then there's a few more which people can see in my book later on. We can talk about where they can freely download it. But yeah, I've had some wonderful um, recommendations from people I greatly admire. And it's humbling in the least, Zanzele, uh, to get that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, you, you would agree with me uh, that I, I should say that you are now an AI expert. No, not 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 an AI enthusiast like you are saying, uh, but yeah, you are an, an, an enthusiastic AI expert. I think that is better. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great book. I think uh, we should uh, you know 
all get hold of that book. Uh, it's available for free if, if, if I'm not mistaken, Johan. Uh, everyone can access it um, and, and learn more about how this technology is, um, you know, uh, transforming our society, is, is affecting our businesses, and what are some of the, the, the issues that you should uh, look into or the challenges that uh, you should expect when you are implementing this technology? And how is, is it going to affect you or affect different industries? Uh, maybe... You know, you from the um, the people that have read the the the, the book, uh, Johan. Um, how how has the the reception been? You know, you know from from the the people, uh, the, the the feedback on on, on the book, uh, the people that have uh, read it. Okay, thank you. I want to make two comments before I answer that question. Firstly. Yeah. It's daunting if you call me an AI expert because I feel there's so much I don't know. There's so much I need to learn. Um, maybe a thought leader for what that's worth. But I, I deal with people in my job and people I speak with often that I, you know, they stay are definitely smarter and much more of an expert than me. But when it comes to translating it, like I said earlier, into simple terms, into terms yeah. that affects society, maybe I'm somewhat good at that but i don't think i'm an expert the second thing i want to say yeah. before i get to your your answer is just to quickly give the the viewers um a, a view of what i've done is i've divided the book so i've taken all these articles i've written the 46 and i've divided it as best i could into different chapters or sections yeah. some of them overlap quite a bit but i quickly want to show this now i'll put it on the screen as well when we do the video edit i start off with, with AI in my world, an African view. Okay. Because we, like I said earlier, we get the Silicon Valley view, but what about natural language processing or bots in Africa where there are 3,000 languages spoken? And we most likely only have four or five languages, mostly European and American, available in these chatbots. So the African lens, the South African lens is important. And then I say AI and automation in an everything automated world hugely societal impact what do we do with all the jobs that will be lost yeah then i speak about ai in the world looking more at the global stage very important topic next ai and healthcare health and longevity there's so much beautiful work being done in that to make people be healthier live longer through this technology and then just the last three is then i get to ai and business practical steps so where do you start on your ai journey what are the pitfalls to look out for and so forth I speak then about AI in our world, the societal impact, future of our children, education and the like. And then lastly, I speak or write about AI in our future, looking over the horizon, what's next, the implants, the metaverse and the like, you know. So, yeah, but the feedback so far, Zanzela, has been great. Yeah. And, and again, because it's, I want to really spread this message. It's freely available. People can read whatever chapters they want to read. Here and there, I've had some really good comments back where that actually changed my mind where I thought, okay, I should have written that chapter differently. I didn't see the whole picture. And that's the great thing. That's how we learn. Unless you yeah. kind of put yourself out there with your opinion and receive positively, respectfully um, aimed criticism, you won't learn. You know, so yeah. it, the, the reception has been good. A lot of good feedback. I'd love more people to read it. And again, they don't ever have to remember me, but if it changes their mind about the urgency of how much we need to harness this technology, use it for good, I'll mm. be very satisfied because no one has to ever remember me. Our children mm. has to remember the fact that we have changed the world because we've utilized this technology in the right way. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I like what you said earlier. Uh, read more than you write. I think there is so much to read about, so much to learn when it comes to this technology. There are so many books that are available uh, that we can all consume and, and, and be confident. The more we learn about this technology, the more we dispel all these fears and misconceptions surrounding artificial intelligence and the better we are prepared to face the future and the inevitable disruption, the inevitable disruption, as I always like to say. And um, I, I think, Johan, it's, 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 it's always a pleasure. Um, and um, we, we, we should uh, encourage each other to, you know, read all these books and, and prepare not only ourselves, 
uh, for the future. But uh, our children, like you're saying, the future of our children, uh, we, we don't know what the, the future holds. Uh, technology, things are changing very fast. And um, if we prepare ourselves and, and study more, the, then we will be better prepared. But anyway, uh, let, let me not uh, talk, talk a lot. Uh, I should also learn uh, to read more than I talk. Um, <laughs> so, Johan, where, where, can, where can people access this book? Uh, how can I, uh, everyone, where can they access it? Where can they download it? Um, okay. Yeah. On my website, and I'll put the URL on the video edit, it's aiforbusiness.net. It's on the home page. You click on it, and you can either just view the table of contents or Dr. Jacques' forward or the recommendations, or you can just download the, the PDF. It's about 100, I can't remember now, 130 or so pages. And like I said, you can, people can pick whatever topic they want to read about. Freely available um, on the website. And I, I don't even track, or I don't even know who's downloading it or not. I'm not asking for uh, people to submit the email addresses before they can download it, whether it's 10 people or a thousand. I don't know, and it doesn't matter. It's out there, and hopefully people will utilize that um, as a resource to shape their own thinking as well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Johan. Uh, thank you for sharing your, your thoughts on this uh, important uh, subject of artificial intelligence. Um, I, I wish you uh, all the best as, as you write to many more uh, books, uh, you know, about this uh, technology. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much uh, for the, the impact that you are, you are making. In, in, in our lives professionally with, uh, with uh, your, your insights as well. We really appreciate it. And yeah, all the best. Thank you so much, Johan. It's been, it's been a great pleasure uh, chatting with I you. I appreciate that, Sincele. I appreciate you and I look forward to the exciting <laughs> guests we're going to interview this year on our channel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Let's keep on spreading the word and do good with this technology. I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you. See you next week on the other side of the show. Thank you. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>